sweeping victory today. It looked as though it was going to be a coasting performance after John Mills scored the early goal, but it was far from that, wasn't it? No, I thought they were good. I thought they were a good side. Someone said they finished third last year. They were well organised. Uh, they've had three, I think, that didn't play today, that played last week. They've had a bit of a strange week this week with the manager going um, to a couple of years in the bar. But they came and done their club proud. I thought they were a very good side and uh, we found it difficult against them. I thought we, we started quite well. And then uh, it just seemed to be as the game went on, we didn't take our foot off the pedal, but we just found it hard to get a proper foothold in the game. And um, we looked a little bit disjointed at times and it wasn't quite there in the end, but, but like I said, it, it shows how far we've come because I think certainly nine games ago we'd have lost that today. Obviously, we certainly wouldn't have won it. Um, and so a like clean sheet as well, which I'm great sure save. you will point to immediately. That's a great save from Harvey to keep us in it when they, you know, when we, we're, we're not playing well, and that's that's what you ask of people. You ask them to do their jobs and do them well. And Harvey, what hasn't been called on of late, but he hadn't made a fantastic save early in the second half. And I thought that might have done enough to give us a bit of a kick up the backside and get us going, but it didn't. And we did we. We just looked a little bit flat, and like I said, it's been, we are, one of the things, is, I'm not going to keep going on about it, but certainly today is we are a young side, and we've had 13, 14 games now, and we've tra done a bit of travelling, which is fine, um, but, but they are young boys, and, it's, and it's, it's a step up, certainly for some of them, playing men's football week in, week out, some of them haven't played men's football week in, week out, but we certainly looked a little bit jaded at times today, and we've, we've, we had a, an easier week in work in terms of, as, a, as in physical, but we... Uh, we got together and worked on a few bits and pieces and uh, hoping to get a little bit of splash back that we didn't have at the weekend and, and it wasn't quite there but like I said, I can't complain because they've, they've put a shift in, they've worked extremely hard today and although things didn't go well they kept at it and things didn't quite come off but they kept at it and, and uh, like I said we've kept a clean sheet and, uh, and we've, we won the game against one of our, you know, one of our closest rivals because like I said I, I as long as they don't lose too many players, I think they'll be, I think they'll be there they're about to come in the season. As you say, they're very hard-working and well-organised. Solomon Wheatley went off with seemingly a recurrence of his, his back injury. Is that something that they're going to have to investigate? Well, it's one, it's one of them things I'm a bit frustrated about because obviously, you know, all of a sudden, within 10 minutes of the first half, we're walking around like an 80-year-old man. And, you know, at the end of the day, these, these young boys are coming into the game and they need to know their bodies better. Yeah. And uh, and it's about learning their body and, and and when they're right and when they're not right. And he hasn't done a huge amount. He he trained on Thursday and done very well in training in what he did. And uh, so we thought he was fine. And obviously he's done the warm up, never even mentioned it. And then ten minutes in, all of a sudden he's feeling it again. Um, you know, so so they've got a lot to learn about how they you know how they uh, make good decisions about their body and whether they're right or whether they're not right. And I think sometimes there's the fear of if they're not in the team and the team's doing well, they're going to find it hard to get back in, but that's not the way to do it, because what he does is he lets himself down, and he lets his team down, so but that's why we changed it as quickly as we did, so, you know, like I said, so he's a young man, and he's, he's uh, he needs to learn, you know, to say that he's not right. But you, you made a very important decision then to substitute the substitute. Was that purely because the full-back Cole was coming forward, and with four times we were yeah. <laughs> he, he came through and he got past you I, fairly easily? It is a... It's a tough learning curve. Again, Nathan's 18 years of age. He's never played men's football before. He's done extremely well when he's come on previously and played up front. And he's come on here and played wide. And I'm trying to give him as much of a chance as I can. So we brought him on early today. And it's just about understanding and learning his game. He can't just be a centre forward. He's got to learn to play in other positions as well. And, you know, sometimes it doesn't quite go your way on the day. And today wasn't his day. I feel a little bit sorry for him because, like I said, because no one likes to come on and then come off again. But I just felt that we needed to change it to try and help on that side of the pitch because that's where their threat was coming from. And, and he just couldn't quite get into the game again, as in so closing the fullback down. He kept running too fast and the fullback just skipped past him. So, so Max is more defensive minded. And obviously, when he came on, you know, obviously you could see the difference straight away in, in he tried to hold the full back up and slow him down a little bit and, and that slowed their tempo down a little bit. So it worked for us today. It's not ideal for Nathan. I know he'll be, he'll be feeling bad about it now, but I will speak to him afterwards and we'll have a chat. And at the end of the day, as we've said, progression, development, all these players will, will add things to their game and they'll learn lessons as they go. And he's learned a valuable lesson today. We heard that John Mills obviously scored 21st goal of the season after news had broken of a new contract. What, what can you tell us about that? Is that now a, a fully fledged professional player's contract that you would <laughs> you would get in, say, the football league? It works. It works in the same way in the fact that we now know that, that John signed the contract this afternoon before the game. Um, we've been in. I've been talking to him and Pablo for probably over a week now. And um, we had an early discussion at the, at the, before the Barden game, um, and we discussed it in length. Then we discussed it again in length this week. 
um, and, and the club have agreed that we think that these players need to be secured and looked after for our future, certainly for this season. Um, so John has signed these today um, and we're delighted about that because it's fantastic news because it means that we can't just lose him for seven days now. It means that someone will have to approach the club properly and if they want to prize him away they're going to have to offer money for him. Um, to take him away, so it secures his future with us. We secure a very good centre forward who's in form at the moment, and we're hoping that Pablo will do the same. Um, and at the moment, he's obviously mulling things over. He's a young man, and he wants to make sure he's making the right decision. And I'm sure, hopefully, he'll be he'll be thinking that you know he secures himself here, and this is a good club for him. And hopefully, he'll do the same. But we're delighted that John's done that, and that will take away all the rumours now, and you know people who spread things on Twitter and all the other forums that people go on and start spreading rumours to unsettle people, we know now that we, he can't be unsettled because no one can take him away from us unless they come in with an official approach and it has to be done properly and we can then hopefully then ask for money for him if, he, if anyone comes in for him between now and the end of the season. Now I've always spoken to managers year after year, they say don't look at the league table until October, well it is October, Hereford are top and <coughs> played more games because he knows lost at home to Westfield today so you must be pleased that you have maintained that momentum in such a good run of form I think it's important that momentum is a massive massive thing and I've had long conversations with Martin and with the board and the chairman about maintaining our momentum and you know we've done very well in probably we've overachieved a bit in my opinion for where we are right now as in I didn't think we'd be where we are right now but we're going to take it, of course we are. And like I said, I don't necessarily look at the table in October. I look at the end of the season, last game of the season, and then you'll get a true judge of, of where we should be and where we where we are. But but we, we're in a very good position at the moment. We've shown in the last two weeks that we haven't played particularly well, but we've got results, which is always a nice habit to have. Um, so I'm, I'm more than pleased with what the players have given me so far. Um, but I also know that we are now, in the next couple of weeks, we will be going into a real tough time of, of the season going through the November December period is going to be really tough for us. Is that um, why you brought Anthony Robbins in from? Yeah, Europe? partly. What, what's he going to bring? Partly. To the well, he brings experience. He's 29. He's played. He's played in this level of football for numerous years now, and and he's a different type of player. He can play. He trained on Thursday, and he was excellent on Thursday. He's got to do a bit of catching up because obviously we, we play a little bit of a different style to Westfield's where he's been this year. Um, but, what, but he's also a motivator, I think, in the way he plays. You know, he's full-blooded and he's 100%, as all the lads are, but he's a little bit different. You know, so he's, uh, his strengths are a little bit different to the midfield players we've got, and that's what we want. We want to have a nice balance, but we want to have players that are different. So on different surfaces, different pitch positions. Hey, yeah, possibly. Yeah. I mean, I, I think he could. I think you know, he'll look forward to playing out here today, like we've had. You know, I'm sure he was desperate to get on and get a feel of it, but it wasn't quite to be today. And hopefully, he'll play Tuesday. If he's not, as long as he's not cut tight, he'll play Tuesday, um, and he'll get you know get a game under his belt, and, and that'll be good for him. But yeah. And, and we want to keep continue doing that because, as I've said, explained to the board, momentum is huge, and it's a big word in football. And confidence and momentum, you know, all them things are coming. But momentum more than anything, as as we've seen with teams, when they get on that run, it's important that we keep adding to it, not settling for what we've got already. And I, you know, I'm sure they're they're fed up with me ringing it now because obviously I'm on the phone a lot, and you know, but that's because I want to be better again. I want to make sure we've covered all our bases for every eventuality whether it be the pitches or the style of football we're going to have to change to, you know, we're going to have to make sure that we've covered every base and that's why I'm continually on the phone and we're looking to, we're always looking to bring players in and we might bring players in that are used to playing a different style of football to the one we play at the moment. And like I said, and that's, we've, got to, we've got to try our best to cover every base and, you know, like I said, at the moment, the board have been very good in the fact they've allowed us to offer these contracts to these two players. One of them signed today, so we're delighted with that. Anthony's come in this week. And we hope, like I said, hopefully in a week or two's time, there'll be you know, maybe one or two more coming in. We don't know. We you know, obviously I've got to keep asking questions and keep nagging and moaning at the board, and, and they're being very resilient at the moment, which is great. Like I said, but they know that it's only because we want we all want the same thing. We all want to be successful. So well, three thousand trade today. I mean, it, 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 I, I couldn't believe we've got three thousand today. To be fair. I think I think it just goes to show again momentum. We've had, we're on a fantastic run. <coughs> Obviously, we'd like to put on. A performance that the fans can go away and you know and, and at times they, they were quiet because but I, I again I put that down to two things one I didn't think we were quite at it today but two also we played a very good team today for the, you know for where we are they're a good side and you know they're well organized they're fit they're mobile you know and they've got intelligent players who, who fill pockets and play well and move the ball quite quickly and 
like I said, it, I thought it was a good game of football, um, but I just disappointed with my team that we didn't play as flowing as we have been. But like I said, I'm happy in the fact that we've got a clean sheet and we, and we, you know, where we are at the moment, sat at the top of the table. Then that's that's even nicer. That's the bonus to go with it. Peter Beadle, thanks very much indeed. No worries, thank you. Well, there we are.